sit down. Uh, I'm going to give a little speech here that only takes about 30 seconds or so. And uh, it's about uh, Madge's birthday. And as you know, uh, every birthday deserves a birthday card. And I want to tell you one thing about my experience and almost 40 years of marriage and having picked out birthday cards, it isn't easy. You go up and down the aisles and you try to find a card in the, in the card shop, you know, and you just suddenly discover that Hallmark and Truebox and all those places, they have not designed the right card for Madge. <laughs> it's a, almost impossible. They have those cards, you know, that, that have these um, uh, uh, mascara ladies with big hairdos that that look like they uh, want to be the nanny look-alike uh, or wannabes or whatever and uh, they always make these cynical remarks about growing older uh, or they have these uh, very sugary and sentimental cards that 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 really uh, Madge would take a look at and she would choke and, and then, they, then they have those cards with bare-chested he-men, muscle men, you know. And I say, why bother? She's got the same thing at home. <laughs> or, or, or I, always go to, I was almost going to save the full Monty, but I didn't think that was, I thought that was a little too risky. Anyhow, uh, uh, then, the, uh, then there's those with cute little animals, and those come a little bit closer to hitting the mark. Uh, but uh, uh, then, because I think they show the, the you know, they appeal to this, the, the compassionate part of Madge. But the real Madge card would have to be a combination. Uh, it would have to be down to earth, but with a sense of humor, and a little bit of irony in it too, you know, a little bit of sarcasm or something. It should have real sentiment, but not be sentimental. And it should be inspirational without being preachy. In short, it would reflect the very qualities for which we all love Madge. It should be down to earth and have a warm but acute sense of humor, compassion without condescension, and being spiritual without being sanctimonious. Let me know when you find such a card. In the meantime, I have designed my own card, and I want to show it to you because it's the only way I can express what I feel. <laughs> and it says, happy birthday, <laughs> And let us congratulate ourselves for being a part of her circle of friends and relatives. L'chaim. Could you laugh before? Because this isn't a laughing 
story, but it's just telling you about feelings. Some years ago, a daughter spoke of her father with great feeling and love, and all who listened were awed by her courage and her caring. And at that time, I promised myself that I would prepare myself for special occasions to do the same, and promptly forgot my promise. At the wedding of a special cousin's daughter, I wasn't prepared then either, and it wasn't until the realization hit me that all the talks were on the other side of the family, and I got upset and decided to speak off the cuff, which is not a good idea. And from then on, I've been prepared, whether I speak or not. And today, as I talk about our birthday girl, you should know that she was the daughter who lauded her dad so lovingly. There are many kinds of friends, those who play tennis together, those who play cards, who shop, who do volunteer work. And there are those who have the common bond of being a part of and loving their synagogue and teachers. So it is with Madge and me, but our relationship goes way back, about almost 40 years. Sarah Schatz of blessed memory, as are many of the following, had a clutch of sisters, among whom was Charlotte Shapiro, Madge's aunt. Charlotte and her husband Teddy were best friends with my sister Fanny and her husband Eli, and both girls were the best of cooks. They were great hostesses, and they were always entertaining in their homes. And to my good fortune, I was invited several times to the Shapiros, and there I met Madge for the very first time. Being related to those super gals gave us a great bond, but it wasn't until we got together at Temple Emmanuel that we became friends. In fact, we sat one row after the other at Shabbat services for many, many years but now that we're in our new building, somehow we got separated and find ourselves at opposite sides of the sanctuary. But we look across to make sure that the other is there. In fact, we and other regulars like to inform each other if we are not going to be at the services so that there will be no worries. About 20 or so years ago, a Hebrew literacy class program was started and led by a knowledgeable and dedicated group of volunteers. And to my good fortune, Madge was my teacher. She was patient and caring and kind. And one always remembers such a teacher. When a call was sent out for helpers for our Lang Judaica shop, there were only a few volunteers, but Madge was one of them. And for her generosity, we say thank you. Most of you know what a centerfold is being equated in particular with female and male models. This has never been an aspiration of mine, but nonetheless, when I find myself in the position of being a centerfold, it felt very nice. I had submitted two articles to our last sisterhood bulletin, of which Madge is the editor, and whether it was done by design or accident, my friend Madge made my two articles the centerfold. We have to experience it to know how good it feels. Dan and I want to thank you, Mike, and Joey, and Jimmy, and you, Madge, for including us in the celebration of this birthday of a wonderful gal, my friend Madge.